Hey, this is Notzer, and today we're taking a look at Shikashima. This is a work in progress ship. This is the Super Yamato. It has six 510 millimeter guns on three gun turrets. It's quite literally using the Yamato chassis with that upped gun gun caliber. Wargaming has made multiple changes to the ship, and I'm going to talk about this version and what this version means in the game and whether I would actually care about it. My build is on the screen. It's basically what I'm using on my Yamato. Save for, obviously, Yamato has a legendary. This does not. And uh, my commander is literally Yamamoto, who is assigned to my Yamato. So the experience of playing the ship should be very, very similar to the Yamato, save for the gun performance. And boy, is it a letdown in the gun department. Uh, Yamato has nine 460 millimeter guns, probably the one of the most famous battleship armaments ever conceived. I think everyone knows what Yamato has. This has six 510 millimeters, which was apparently a prototype gun caliber the Japanese tested, but they did not like, and I don't blame them, because who needs 510 millimeter guns? I mean, the 460 are already overkill against great big battleships. Stands the reason that the 510 would be as well. Well, they are, and they definitely play like that. But one of the nice things that Wargaming has done since the last version is updated the gun velocity, the reload, the AP damage, and just the overall feeling of playing with this gun. It's much more akin to controlling the Yamato than it was prior to this version. Prior to this version, it had a 35 second reload. It had a gun velocity of like 720 meters per second. It's very similar to American. And you can imagine that the guns took forever to get over to the target. So all of that long range prowess that the Yamato enjoys could not be had by this ship. They have addressed that with the gun velocity changes. The reload is better. It's 27 seconds base, which of course is a really nice improvement as compensation though for improving the reload rate of the ship. They have nerfed the AP damage shell from 19,000 to... Uh, 17,000 I think or 17,800 or something like that you lose about a thousand to two thousand per citadel but again it overpins really really hard obviously we were pretty lucky to get damage on that DD but overall impression of the ship this is a very very capable ship in a bow position against a battleship if, if two battleships just want to shoot at each other about 10 to 12 kilometers away you can overmatch and penetrate their citadel easier than pretty much any ship in the game, including the Yamato. That little extra oomph of penetration really helps in that scenario only. Uh, where, uh, obviously, it isn't helpful is literally every other scenario. A broadside, a slightly angled. You don't get any benefit from having this giant gun caliber. You actually lose out. And it's hard for this ship to keep up with the Amato's damage per minute, for instance. And the Amato's damage per minute is very low. I think it's among the worst. Um, I think the Kremlin beats it out with the damage per minute on battleships at tier 10. But this is right in that area. This is definitely up there with the worst damage output per minute in the game from uh, tier 10. So that's a huge downside, and oh, you, you cheeky Yamato, he was able to grab that shell right over that island and barely hit us, which is great, he causes a citadel. Again, it has the same exact weaknesses of armor. So there's not really a benefit to playing this differently than the Yamato. And it's especially obvious with the gun velocity changes and all that stuff. So, you know, effectively, you are playing a prototype of the Yamato that is less effective than probably a standard Yamato would be in every matchup, and you are going to be expected to spend steel for the ship. It's not going to be a cheap ship, but it kind of feels like a cheap ship because it's using a hull that's previously existed in the game. Look at the Ohio, look at the Thunderer, both using hulls that have ex existed with slightly different setups, mind you, bigger gun caliber, but they are using those holes, and one is for coal, and the other one is in the research bureau, and the research bureau definitely isn't cheap, but steel is probably the most expensive resource. And to have this be a steel ship 
It has certain expectations it must live up to, which it does not. It is not in the same vein as the Brigand or the Stalingrad. This is not one of those ships that you look up to and dream of owning someday. This is a ship that you look at and then you just play a game in your motto and realize this is a lot better experience. And oh boy, this guy pulls like the hardest knots are right in front of me, <laughs> which is always enjoyable. We're going to lean him as he's trying to reverse out. Hopefully we catch him. And you know the guns, we're using four guns in the front, trying to incorporate the two guns in the rear. Obviously when you open up that much, it makes your citadel vulnerable to damage. I am placing this island in between my ship and the Amano, so we can't do that cheeky shot over the island again. We do get a citadel. Citadels happen very frequently against max range targets, um, bow tanking battleships, where you get a chance to go point blank. But they don't happen that frequently, and if you look at the Amato, the Amato is another ship where they don't happen that frequently either because cruisers are thin. Hell, even battleships, I overpan battleships when they're broadside. This just has so much penetration force that you're going to wish that you could drop the caliber down, which you can by playing the Yamato. So at the end of the day, it's a Yamato with 510 millimeter. You lose three guns for that. The gun performance is very similar to the 460 in everything except the gun caliber. And that gun caliber alone is the reason why these guns are just, they're just hard to use. You know, because of the gun caliber, you have to limit the number of guns that can be in a position. Okay, well, if we go over and look at something like the Georgia, which is a six gun, you know, the guns themselves can get, you know, really bad matchups where you could face a snowstorm or something that throws off your accuracy further. But for something like the Georgia, you get access to speed boost and fast recharge heal and secondary gun range and it's legit on all of those aspects whereas the unique trait that you have to justify using this over the Amato is the AA performance and you know I don't really feel like the Amato's AA is bad especially when you look at the context of the game right now it's actually pretty good plus the torpedo protection the Amato has always been a very effective anti-airship because of the torpedo protection and the amount of health it has, but it's always been vulnerable to AP dive bombs, and this is going to be just as vulnerable. The improved AA performance isn't enough to stop the initial AP drop, so a well-captained or well-piloted CV squadron can do effectively the exact same anti-Yamato play against the Shikashima and you'll never even recognize that extra AA oomph. So it's really hard for me to justify the existence of the ship as a steel ship. It's a lot easier for me to look at it and say, oh, it's a coal ship or, oh, it's a free XP ship. It's nothing super serious. But when you stick the steel tag on it, it really needs to shine to make players feel like they're getting their value in the time they spend by unlocking all of that steel in rank or clan battles, and it's just not here. I've tried to figure out the best play for this, and it seems that the best play, and it's not spectacular, is to find yourself in a bow tanking position that isn't the Amato. The Amato has the same overmatch that you have, uh, you might have like two or three millimeters of complete overmatch, but there's nothing that you're ever going to be presented with where that actually matters. There's not some special unique ship with a 35 millimeter bow. You don't get to benefit from that. And we set up this nice shot going for the Citadel front spin, and we couldn't even bust through there. We had six shells do tons and tons of damage, but it didn't bust through, and now he's going to be able to return fire, and he quite literally could kill us right here. And... It's the down to the number of guns, the number of penetration, and it just doesn't end up being worth it. So I appreciate the changes they made. I think the gun velocity is much more usable. I think that the ship itself plays better, but I, there's nothing here that's better than the Amato in any measurable way. Because when you get right down to it, the anti-air isn't enough to stop aircraft from doing what they do 
many, many, many ships in this game suffer from that. So that can't be what you hang your hat on. Because if it's solely what you hang your hat on, well, I would rather hang my hat somewhere else. And that's what I feel about this ship, and I'm sure many CCs and Supers have the same feeling. You know, maybe if it had faster turret traverse, or another consumable equipment option, just something to differentiate it from the Amato more. So it doesn't end up feeling like a carbon copy. Uh, maybe even have slightly better or worse concealment. Anything. Anything that they can think of to give it more of a reason to be interesting for players. And I, I, I hope that Wargaming looks at this and considers how not spectacular it is. Yeah, three. Overpin. Overpin, you know, it's a good distance. We had 15 kilometers and we overpin all our shots on enemy Montana. You just have to hit just right where there's a lot of excessive armor behind to stop the shell so it stays in the ship and possibly citadels. And it's just, it's, it's all right. It's not spectacular. And that's, that's okay if the price was right, but the price is just not right. So, you know, we've done 135,000 and it's taken us 13 minutes and we've had some pretty very convenient situations like a broadside minnow at max range or a point blank Yamato. And we, we still couldn't have the kind of citadels that make you feel like, yes, this ship is the reason why I'm doing well. I'm able to take on any opposition if I just frame it so that I take advantage of what I'm good at. And what I'm good at is bow tanking and doing bow overmatch AP. Uh, whereas a lot of other ships, well, guess what? They can easily just switch to HE and do effectively the same amount of damage just over a long distance, a long time, uh, whereas, you know, if you really want that experience for the cheap, you just play your Yamato. And that seems like a really good solution. Just play the Yamato, save all that steel, and buy something else. And look at that! We actually got a Citadel from the stern position. I get more Citadels from the bow and stern position on the ship than any other, and those are a rarity. So it's like, I give up all of the broadside citadel on cruisers and battleships in order to get infrequent bow and stern citadels. It just doesn't end up feeling like it's worth it. And, you know, that's disappointing because if you look at the Conqueror versus the Thunderer, the Conqueror did lose those guns, the 457s, but it was assigned to a ship where it performed better with that gun layout. So, you know, the 419s work well together. The 457s, you have diversity in the consumable style in any number of things. I would just have liked this to have something like that. Maybe introduce the fast recharge heal or maybe a larger heal to compensate for the more, yeah, I, would, I would say, disappointing dispersion that the player has to deal with. As it stands right now, gun performance is definitely more usable. But it's so inconsistent because of the number, I don't think you can overcome that with just gun changes. I really think that they need to offer something different from the Amato so that you don't feel like, okay, well, it's just a downgrade if I do anything similar to the Amato, say for I can kill off aircraft slightly faster, which at the end of the day, you guys know, that's not a really good trait. It needs something else. So faster turret traverse, uh, consumable, maybe a different heal. Uh, just something to make it feel different enough to justify that slot in the port. Right now, as far as I'm concerned, it does not. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to check out more of my content, you can click the most recent or the most relevant uploads. You could also choose to subscribe to my channel. We do daily Watership videos, first impression, how-to, news, and review related. My North American recruit invite is on the screen. You can take advantage of that. I stream at twitch.tv slash Thank you, have a wonderful day, and I'll catch you next time.